back. Welcome back. You man, Dominic K in here, of course, the Dominic K show.com on fire dash tv.com radio on fire.com WRF radio app. Glad to be here. Glad to uh, be back with you, everybody. Uh, a lot of things to get into. We have a jam packed show today. Uh, some of the things we're going to talk about, I want to talk about this pastor who called the congregation poor, broke, busted, and disgusted. Talk about that. We're going to talk about Liz Cheney being defeated in the Wyoming primary. Uh, former Vice President Mike Pence says he's going to consider testifying before the January 6th committee. Uh, he's going to think about that if he is ever asked. He said he's going to He's going to take it under uh, consideration. <laughs> How about that? He's going, he's going, isn't it nice when you can just uh, take uh, take stuff under consideration, take testifying under consideration? City of Chicago passing 400 homicides for the year. We talk about that. Also, over 1 million fentanyl pills seized in Arizona within one week. One week. A Maryland woman indicted on a capital charge in an Alabama killing. R. Kelly has a baby on the way. Also in Baltimore, Oreo Sports Betting Lounge is going to be opening next year. And also in Baltimore, high school football state champions give back through Mayor Scott's back to school event. As I said, a lot of things to uh, to uh, dissect. How many of y'all go to church? You know, like one of those uh, uh, Baptist churches. You know what I'm saying? How, how many of y'all? How many of y'all do that? A lot of, I'm sure a lot of y'all do that. So in Kansas City, Pastor uh, scolded his congregation. Scolded them. Now, now we've seen a lot of janky pastors over the years. A lot of them. Now, this one in Kansas City, uh, he was calling the congregation broke, calling them busted and disgusted. Uh, and, uh, you know, in many instances, a successful pastor equates to thankless work that they're doing in the community, trying to change lives for individuals who otherwise may have gone on the wrong path. But I think that a lot of people, a lot of crooks, have gone into religion and used religion as a way to continue scamming people. So you've had a lot of flashy so-called people of God, flashy individuals. Remember that Brooklyn... Uh, a Brooklyn bishop who was robbed of a million dollars worth of jewelry. I think his name was uh, Lamar Miller Whitehead. This happened while he was live streaming. Y'all remember that? It's really very clear that preaching the good news, preaching the word of God can be a lucrative business. Now, in a recent on-camera soliloquy, this uh, my charismatic pastor from Kansas City boldly declared that he, too, should enjoy the spoils of his occupation. He felt like his congregation wasn't giving him enough. And, and he kind of ran down some of the things that he wanted. Greasy, just, just, just greasy, greasy. He should enjoy the spoils of his occupation. So he condemns his congregation for neglecting to give him more money. Condemns his congregation for failing to give him a new watch. He wanted his Movado watch. Well, I had a couple of Movado watches. All right, but I bought them myself, though. I didn't condemn other people for that. So he said, uh, just just a lot. I mean, it, it, it's pretty disgusting when you think about it. He talked about them being dusted and disgusted, which is a phrase that I, I remember hearing on, uh, I think, was it the E-40 song? I think it was the E-40 song back in the 90s. This is an old term. 
Yeah. So it just tells you this is an old hip hop pastor. Let's uh, listen to the clip uh, that the uh, we hear the pastor on. See, that's how I know you still poor, broke, busted, and disgusted because of how you've been honoring me. I'm not worth your McDonald's money. Come on. Come on. I'm not worth your Red Lobster money. Come on. I ain't worth your St. John knit. Y'all can't afford it no how. I ain't worth y'all Louis Vuitton. Come on. I ain't worth your Prada. Come on. I'm not worth your Gucci. Mother, ooh, I'm saying this, and I promise you, Deaconita, it's not with respect it won't. I'm saying it because I want you to understand just what God is saying. Even found out that Movado, you can buy a Movado watch in Sam's. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And y'all know I asked for one last year. Here it is the whole way in August. I still ain't got it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me kick down the door and talk to my cheap sons and daughters. See, that's how it, I know you, you know, still broke, is, broke, busted, really and disgusted because of how you've been uh, honoring me. Disgusted. How this... Pastor is. I'm not worth your McDonald's money. His congregation. Come on. Come on. That, that's how I'm not a, worth a, your a red lobster money. Would talk to his hoes. I ain't worth your Saint that's John. That's how would talk to his hoes. Y'all can afford it no You hear this guy? I ain't worth y'all Louis Vuitton. He ain't worth Louis Vuitton. I ain't worth and your then, product. And then you know it, it, it's probably some ashy deacon over here co-signing. You hear me in the background? You hear him? Come on. Mother, ooh, I'm saying this, and I promise you, Deacon it's not with respect it won't. I'm saying it because I want you to understand just what God is saying. Even found out that Movado, you can buy a Movado watch in Sam's. Yes, you can. Yeah. And y'all know I asked for one last year. Here it is the whole way in August. I still ain't got it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me kick down the door and talk to my cheap sons and daughters. See, that's you know, how I know you. Uh, it, it is it is really sad when uh, you have these folks. And, and so some of these old school Christians, I'm sure, go to this church. He probably got this church from his father, probably passed down through the family. But why do why do folks allow charisma, charismatic crooks to pimp them like this? He said. See, that's how I know you're still poor, broke, busted, and disgusted because of how you've been honoring me. See, y'all take the Bible a little bit too literal. And um, he was funny, entertaining. This might be something you, you might see in a movie, but not in real life. So as he paced back and forth in front of this audience, he says, I'm not worth your McDonald's money. I'm not worth your Red Lobster money. I ain't worth your St. John's nits. Y'all can't afford it no how. I ain't worth your Louis Vuitton. I ain't worth your Prada. I'm not worth your Gucci. So the commentary was part of the pastor's sermon about Attending to God's shepherd, which is a biblical term that refers to a person who leads God's people or believers. And after watching this clown, are you still a believer? Would you still go to this church? I don't know. But uh, we've talked about politics and the so-called leaders there falling short of their mandates. And here's another example of another so-called man of God falling short of his mandate. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to church. I'm just saying that you have to make sure that if you are going to follow behind somebody and entrust them with something as important as your eternal salvation, that it's not some clown or crook like this Kansas City Pope pimp. I'm just saying. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com, radioonfire.com, the WRF radio app.
You know, I just, it's not that I'm coming down on religion, obviously. You know, you pray to who you pray to, believe what you believe. But if you are following behind somebody who is truly not walking the walk, truly not talking the talk, think that they just supposed to come and y'all just supposed to just kick them out money and 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 that is the the display of how faithful you are. I never understood that anyway. So, you know, tithing, right? I think it's a controversial concept. But let's just say that the person doesn't have that much money. Let's say that they don't have a lot of money to give. They give what they can, right? That's, that's what it's supposed to mean. So him calling them poor, broke, busted, and disgusted, I think that he needs to reevaluate the interpretation of uh, the King James Version of the Bible that he's probably pulling from. I'm just saying. It is, it is a lot of clowns, poe pimps, and, uh, and straight con men out here running around town taking y'all money. Welcome back. Welcome back. Your man, Diamond K, in here, of course, the Diamond K Show.com, on fire-tv.com. No surprise here. Last night, no surprise in Wyoming, the election in Wyoming. We talked about it, and uh, I'm going to say there was no surprises. Liz Cheney lost. Sometimes, though, sometimes when you lose in an election, you can really win. Sometimes. What I heard from Liz Cheney last night uh, is, you know, uh, it, it was a loss. It was a loss. And, you know, she's a Republican. Politically, I don't agree with her. Her father was a very controversial figure. Like, uh, 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 no doubt. No doubt about it. Um, but, you know, her supporters say that her re-election hopes were doomed on January 13th, I guess a week after the insurrection to the Capitol. She and nine other House Republicans voted to impeach the president impeached Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? You remember that? Uh, Tony, I'm going to uh, give me about 15 minutes. I can bring you in about 15 minutes if you want to hop on the live uh, on Instagram. Give me about 15 minutes. Let me get through a couple things, and then uh, I'll bring you on no problem. Um, now, uh, ever since that day, Liz Cheney's role on the House Select Committee investigating the insurrection her ads that featured her father, uh, as I said, Dick Cheney, they uh, eviscerated Trump in her speeches. She tried to steer folks away from the influence of Donald Trump. However, all of this just served Harriet Hagman's victory in the Wyoming primary. So it has one House seat. And uh, Liz Cheney lost. So Wyoming's results yesterday demonstrated the long odds those Trump critics face in the Republican Party, in which the former president remains the most dominant figure and is teasing a third run for the White House in 2024. Here's the thing. I don't want people to get it confused. Just because he is... I don't know, a big deal in the Republican Party. Independents and Democrats don't bang with him like that. And there are more Democrats and independents than there are Republicans. And he's turned off some Republicans also. So yes, there are Republicans that are loud and angry and believe what Trump is telling them. But there are more of us than there are of you. 
And when we vote, we're talking about the majority. You're talking about the majority. He already lost the last time before the insurrection. Pre-insurrection, he lost the popular vote. He lost. So what do you think is going to happen this time? He's going to lose. So if if y'all choose to have him as your your representative, you're going to get less votes. So you're going to be mad again. You'll be mad at the next election. So anyway, this is uh, this is a difficult time. The roots of Liz Cheney's loss were planted long before yesterday's primary. In some cases, these seeds were planted during the the battles within the Wyoming Republican Party, dating back to the Tea Party era when Cheney was still a resident of Virginia. Is she going to run for president? I don't know. I don't know what she plans to do, but I am pretty sure she's raised her national profile and she has something in store. I think that it's really good to see somebody put party behind country, right? Your country should come first, party second. Bree, what's going on? How's it going, Bree? Uh, shout out to Big Bree. You can check her out Mondays, 9 p.m. when the No Filter Podcast. That is a lot of fun, the No Filter Podcast. Bree is uh is <laughs> one of a kind. Bree is one of a kind. How's it going? Where you at in the world? Are you still in Baltimore or are you um are you in Vegas? Talk calling me big. Big Diamond, you big breed going to Vegas. Yeah, a lot of things that we need to get into. So Liz Cheney, she is uh, uh, she is down, but I don't think she's out just yet. I, I don't I don't think she's out just yet. Uh, also in the news, Mike Pence is calling on Republicans to stop bashing the FBI after this Trump search. Pence tells the GOP to stop lashing out at the FBI. I mean, it makes sense. The, the Republicans are talking about defund the FBI. These were the same people talking about <laughs> Democrats and, and independents and, and black people and, and whoever else that was saying defund the police. Now they're saying, no, don't defund the police. We got one better for that. Defund the FBI. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Uh, Pence also said that he considered testifying before the January 6th committee if invited. Oh, you know he's going to be invited. Former president said today that he would give due consideration to any formal invitation to testify before the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th, 2021 attack on the Capitol. Still, he was hinting at potential executive privilege issues. Pence made the remarks during a Q&A after a speech at uh, New Hampshire Institute of Politics, Politics and Eggs Breakfast. All right, it's a common stop for candidates that are considering a run for office. He said that if there was an invitation to participate, I would consider it. After calling January 6th a tragic day for all Americans. Oh, and he knows how tragic it was. He was in there running and hiding, ducking and dodging with his whole family. Now he tries to downplay it. But at the time, he was scared and shook. Scared and shook. While Pence said that it would be unprecedented for a vice president to be asked to testify on Capitol Hill, Presidents and vice presidents have testified before Congress in the past. They include President Gerald Ford, who testified voluntarily in front of the House uh, Judiciary Subcommittee on Criminal Justice in 1974 to explain why he pardoned his predecessor, Richard Nixon. Tricky dick. There's some serious constitutional issues. A person with knowledge of Pence's thinking, 
cautioned against reading too much into his remarks on Wednesday. I mean, he just says stuff. You know what I mean? Let's keep in mind that um, he was Trump's flunky for like four years. So, I mean, we can only believe part of what he says. So we'll see. I'm sure that the January 6th committee would love to sit down with him and uh, chop it up. But uh, you hear him say, you hear him now. I just don't think he's going to keep that same energy if they really ask him to come and uh, sit down. You listen to the Diamond K Show, of course. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this. It's the Diamond K Show. So much going on in the world. You talk about things from the perspective of how it is. DJ Diamond K, sometimes it comes off like you are almost not in support of, but you just accept the way things are and there's no chance of change. Check me out on YouTube. That's the part that I am just like, ah. On FireTV.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Diamond K in here, of course. The DiamondKShow.com. Today's broadcast brought to you in part by City View Bar and Grill. City View is a family-friendly, casual dining bar and restaurant providing high-quality food and good old-fashioned friendly service. At the City View Bar and Grill, you can live every hour like it's happy hour. The food is mouth-watering. The atmosphere is fun, energetic, and mature. Located at 6700 Security Boulevard in Gwen Oak, Maryland, it's the City View Barn Grill. Stop in today or visit cityviewmd.com. So we are back, and, um, you know, it is the, I don't know, crime in America has gone crazy. It is, the uptick is uh, unprecedented. The city of Chicago just passed 400 homicides for the year. Last year, 2021, city of Chicago registered just under 800 homicides. The record-breaking carnage set a new precedent in the Windy City. Now, it comes on the heels of several anti-violence initiatives. I mean, the city's mayor, Lori Lightfoot, She's tried to do things to curb the violence. Since 2020, Mayor Lightfoot has introduced citywide ventures to the public, such as the Comprehensive Violence Reduction Plan, Mental Health Vacation Days for Students, and the Summer Safety Strategy. She even proposed the Victims Justice Ordinance in an effort to sue the gangs of Chicago. Nevertheless, these endeavors have not made one ounce of an impact in terms of combating the city's murder rate because shootings have been up more than 50% since 2019. According to reports, Chicago recently surpassed the 400 mark in terms of citywide homicides on record. Come on, the good people of Chicago, we really need you to turn the page on this. As of Monday, there were 404 murders on record. As of Monday, August the 15th. This puts the city slightly behind its record-setting pace of last year. To help prevent the city from breaking its own record, Mayor Lightfoot has enacted an early curfew for minors on the weekend and a new plan called the Peace Book Ordinance. The plan was created by Lightfoot city officials and a youth group called Good Kids Mad City. Its purpose is to identify more leaders amongst the youth so that money can be invested in their future. I really hope that the city of Chicago is able to, I don't know, just tone it down. Like, tone it down because things are really, really bad right now. Really, really bad. Speaking of bad... Over 1 million fentanyl pills seized in Arizona within one week. In 2021, authorities in Arizona seized 1.7 million fentanyl pills in a record drug bust. Now, authorities at the southern border of Arizona have come close to seizing that number of pills again. 
According to the port director, Michael Humphreys, the Nogles port of entry saw over 1.1 million fentanyl pills seized. That was one seizure that had approximately 391,000 fentanyl pills. Another had approximately 420,000 pills. The director noted that these busts and smaller ones made up the millions of pills that had been confiscated. One of the busts reportedly included authorities discovering 90,000 pills in a spare tire on August the 2nd. He commented on the number of pills being smuggled, saying, we do get good amounts, but not back to back. But this fiscal year, we are ahead of what we seized last year as far as fentanyl goes. So uh, that is a, a big problem, just uh, worldwide, yeah, a big problem. And uh, unfortunately, I just I don't see signs of that uh, changing. What's going on? What's going on? Um, I don't know. I, I just I, I think that the violence, the pills, there there is some connection amongst these things. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok at the Diamond K Show. Of course, on fire TV.com, the WRF radio app, and radio on fire. Dot com. You listen to the Diamond K Show. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more of the show after this. Visit OnFireTV.com for live top stories, breaking news, and original shows. Welcome back. Welcome back. You may have K in here, of course, the Diamond K Show here at OnFire-TV.com. A Maryland woman has been indicted on capital charge in an Alabama killing. So... This this Maryland woman is accused of killing an Alabama woman who was found dead in a home earlier this year. Records show that 40-year-old Diana Lynn Rogers of Mount Airy, Maryland, faces a potential death penalty if convicted in the slaying of 58-year-old Diane Crane D4 of Athens. D4 was beaten with a wooden bowl and stabbed after someone entered her home. Attorneys representing Rogers have asked the court for orders to protect evidence found at the scene, including a bloody roll of paper towels, blood splattered, a cigarette butt, a can of baby formula, and a vodka bottle. Yeah, this is a... This is a uh, crazy case here. So, as I said, she could be potentially facing the death penalty. What is going on? Speaking of uh, what is going on, uh, the singer, the disgraced singer, R. Kelly, uh, is ex you know according to his fiance Jocelyn Savage she says that she's pregnant with um R Kelly's child R Kelly the 55 year old disgraced singer um has denied this Savage shared her sonogram saying that she is 5 months pregnant and is having a baby girl she is very excited now, as for why R. Kelly's lawyer said that Savage is not pregnant with the singer's child, the 26-year-old says that his lawyers didn't know that prior to him going to jail, Robert and I were doing IVF because at the time, I was told I couldn't have a baby, she says. Oh, the drama. When he got sent to prison, she says, 
we paused on it and I had them freeze my eggs until I was ready. Oh, this is so much drama. Now, Savage says that once his lawyers did find out, she wanted me to have an abortion because she didn't feel that now was the time for me to have a child following the 30 year sentence. You don't say. Uh, but the, I don't know, delusional young lady said that me and Robert wanted to have a child for a long time. You haven't even been alive for a long time, Jocelyn. Jocelyn, R. Kelly's been sentenced to more time than you have been on this earth. He's been sentenced to 30 years. She's 26 years old. Anyway, she said that he is very happy about it. His lawyer isn't. Once I told her I was keeping my baby, she didn't want me to announce, but I wanted to share the great news. I've always been there for him, even before this new lawyer came into the picture. She shares on the ground. And of course, this news comes over two months after it was stated in a letter that Savage and the singer were engaged. The letter was filed by Kelly's team to the judge and Donnelly on June the 13th, two weeks before his sentencing in his sex trafficking case. The letter begins with Savage referring to herself as Robert Kelly's fiance. <laughs> uh, it, it is so interesting how this whole thing has progressed. Kind of sad. Kelly has since been sentenced to 30 years in prison for charges, including racketeering, uh, bribery, coercion, enticement, and sex trafficking. Kelly had previously denied all wrongdoing, pleading not guilty, and has continuously said he will appeal the ruling. The highly publicized trial saw six weeks of courtroom proceedings. In Savage's letter of support, she tried to explain that she is not a victim. Right. She's his fiance and soon to be his. Uh, kid's mother, his daughter's mother. <laughs> she, um, Savage, is from Atlanta. Her and R. Kelly met when she was 19. For his part, Kelly has previously been married to the late singer Aaliyah from 94 to 95. At the time of that marriage, she was 15 and he was 27. The singer went on to marry choreographer uh, Andrea Lee and they were together from 1996 until 2009. They share three children, Joanne, Jay, and Robert Jr. Just a, it, It's really been a sad case when you think about the whole debacle of R. Kelly. Once known as one of the biggest artists in the world, uh, to see and, and just witness what he has become, what has become of him, what is happening. It is, it is, uh, it is truly, truly a sad, sad thing. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Dominic K in here, of course, the Dominic show.com on fire dash TV.com. Uh, the Orioles, Baltimore Orioles have partnered with super book sports. Now there's going to be a betting lounge. That's going to open at the stadium in 2023. The Baltimore Orioles made the announcement of this long-term partnership with the gambling operator, super book sports. Now, this also includes the plans for this uh, sports book at Oriole Park at Camden Yards for the 2023 season. This lounge will include food and drinks and seating for fans to watch the games that they have wagered on. Fans will have the ability to place bets on mobile devices. Other details about the Super Book Sports Lounge, such as where exactly it will be located in the stadium, will be announced at a later date. They said this 
while our organization is striving to build the next World Series contender in Charm City, we are constantly exploring unique opportunities to engage with Birdland's diverse fan base and welcome new visitor, visitors to downtown. The addition of the Superbook Sports Book only reinforces our iconic ballpark's standings as one of the premier entertainment destinations in the region. Of course, approval from the Maryland Lottery and Gaming Control Commission is still required before the sports book can open. So uh, I think that that's good news. I think that's good news. Uh, you know, the thing about the Orioles, I mean, Orioles are up and down, right? Just we got to keep it, keep it 100. Orioles are up and down. You never know how things are going to go. I do like the idea of this sports betting lounge. I think that, like they said, it, it really, it brings another dimension to things. And you know me, I love, I love a good club. I love a good club. Before we get out of here, uh, high school, high school football state champs give back through Mayor Brandon Scott's back to school event. State champion players from Dunbar and Mervo High Schools here in Baltimore filled backpacks with school supplies for needy children ahead of the school year today. I came back because I ain't never really had something like this when I was growing up. So it felt good to come back and give back to the kids, said Deshaun Parks, a running back for Dunbar's football team. It is part of Mayor Brandon Scott's back to school event. Joe Wright, the special team coordinator at Dunbar, said moments like this really make all the difference. It seems like something small, but in these hard times, it could be special to somebody. These high school athletes know that it takes a lot to become state champions. And part of that includes being positive role models for younger kids. Uh, Patrick Nixon, head football coach at Mervo, said that as a coach, I'm constantly teaching these young men how to be humble, and I believe humility is earned and learned through giving onto others instead of always receiving. It's a safe way out the streets. Keep you safe, Mervo Senior Sterling Thomas said. Those three or four hours every day can really save someone's lives. Uh, so definitely shout out to uh, these young men, these these high school uh, football state champs, and uh, shout out to the mayor. Um, you know, it, it we don't get a chance to really talk about you know these good things. It's always the bad stuff. So it's 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 good when we can get and really mention some good things. Um, of course, speaking of good things, today's broadcast brought to you in part by City View Bar and Grill. City View is a family-friendly, casual dining, a bar, and restaurant providing high-quality food and good old-fashioned friendly service. At City View Bar and Grill, you can live every hour like it's happy hour. The food is mouth-watering. The atmosphere is fun, energetic, and mature. Located at 6700 Security Boulevard in Gwen Oak, Maryland. It is the City View Bar and Grill. Stop in today or visit cityviewmd.com. Your man, Diamond K, in here, of course. I will be back. I mean, I'm here, 6, 6 p.m. That's when I'm here live. Uh, last story before we get out of here. Swiss Beats and Timberland are suing <laughs> Triller for $28 million. You remember they sold uh versus to uh triller which is a uh, a social networking site so they they sold this if you remember let's go back about two years ago super producers swiss beats and timberland presented the public with a virtual music catalog a battle that lasted i don't know it, it is a long time maybe about five straight hours during the um the covid quarantine period this would go on to become the blueprint for what is now known as the versus battles. The pair sold their idea to the platform known as Triller for $28 million last year. 
But according to a lawsuit that was recently filed by Swiss Beats and Timberland, their buyer, Triller, neglected to continue with payment installations after having only made two. Now, Triller is being sued by Swiss Beats and Timberland for more than $28 million. A representative from Triller, Triller said recently issued a uh, uh, lawsuit. This is not a feud over versus, but simply about earn out payments to Swizz and Tim. Swizz and Tim have personally been paid by Trilla over 50 million in cash and stock to date. And they stand to benefit even more over time. In addition, they have annual obligations, which if met and no breach has occurred, entitles them to additional payments. So you see where he's trying to go. Listen to that last line again. He said, in addition, they have annual obligations. So reading between that, he's trying to say that they have not met their obligations and uh, a breach has probably occurred, which is you know why they're not getting these payments. He continued by saying, only one payment of $10 million is in question. We do not believe they have met the thresholds for that payment yet, which include, but are not limited to, delivery of a set number of versus events for 2022. So that's the issue. There has not been a lot of versus, you know, events like that, right? And, uh, you know, so that's why they're trying to withhold the money. They should have just kept this in. They, they, they should have just kept this because this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. I thought that it was a weird marriage. I thought it was a weird marriage. To me, it made more sense for them to try to sell it to like Facebook or Instagram or even YouTube or Revolt TV. Well, what good is it for them to sell it for $28 million if they don't get $28 million. They should have sold it for an amount where they would have had more control because I don't know if Trilla really understands hip-hop like that. I don't know if this was the best situation. Sometimes the big money amount is not always the best thing. So uh, uh, Trilla continued, we have been trying to resolve this amicably and this does not affect versus operation operations or Triller's ownership of Versus. If this does proceed in court, we look forward to a judgment that weighs all the facts. So this story is developing. I don't see this as having a good ending. I really don't. Very, very sad here. Here's what happens sometimes you get partners and, and this just doesn't work. I don't see this as being a good marriage of the two. We'll see. You need to get in touch with me, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. You can always stream episodes of the Diamond K show on fire tv.com slash Diamond K, youtube.com slash DJ Diamond K. I will be back this Saturday in the mix, 12 noon. So you can uh, look forward to that. <laughs> That's how I'm going to be spinning uh, Baltimore Club music. And uh, of course, the Diamond K show is an on fire. TV production. You can get the show on demand, the WRF Radio app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and of course, YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K. Here on the show, we deliver the biggest political and trending news stories of the day with interviews and original reporting from all over the country. Show is fun, show is upbeat, but also have to expose what's really going on in this country. I'm going to give you politics from an independent perspective. If a Republican is wrong, I'm going to call that out. If a Democrat's wrong, I'm going to call that out, too. I mean, you know, join me weekdays, 6 p.m. right here. And, uh, you know, it is it's always fun. I love to talk to people that have different, you know, different points of view than me. I don't have to speak to somebody that only agrees with me. But we can talk about things. And uh, maybe you can teach me something. Maybe I can teach you something. Now, we're able to deliver this take, our take, my take on the top news stories of the day because of our sponsors and, of course, our listeners. It is important to have true, independent voices dissecting what is happening in our world today. 
So help keep us on the air. Help power this machine on fire-tv.com slash support. We are powered by the people and uh, appreciate your uh, listenership and your viewership and uh, and all that good stuff. So I will be back here tomorrow, 6 p.m. right here and check us out on demand. Shout out to City View Bar and Grill. I will see you guys when? Tomorrow. <laughs> It's the Diamond K Show. So much going on in the world. You talk about things from the perspective of how it is. DJ Diamond K, sometimes it comes off like you are almost not in support of, but you just accept the way things are and there's no chance of change. Check me out on YouTube. That's the part that I am just like, ah. On FireTV.com.